Shane McGuire says no salesman starters on, um, starts unless they have some sort of project management experience or installing. I hate when uh, someone who doesn't have roofing experience starts companies. I agree with it to the point, but here's the deal, Shane. When the roofers or installers start a business, they don't know how to run a business. And those, and this is my experience too. It goes, hate goes both ways. You hate when sales guys start in companies, and I see that. But I also hate as a you know business owner what, what I see it when installers start, he used to installers' rates, and those guys usually the cheapest. That's the bottom feeder and the uh, well, I wouldn't call them bottom feeders, but there's truth to that too. So the, the, the reality is if installer wants to start a business, he needs to learn business. If the sales guy started a business, he needs to learn installation uh, aspect of it too. So it goes both ways. But I've seen very successful business owners who have sales experience. You can have accounting experience. You can have uh, management experience. So I don't agree necessarily that you have to be one or another. But I do agree that you 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 know you you want to learn. Yeah. What's your take on it? So I mean, hold on. This guy right here was giving us tour. He doesn't know how machines work. He's like, I better not touch it. He broke two I machines. I tried, tried to show him something. It turned off. <laughs> this, I was like, you don't want me touching so it. So the thing is, in your business, you don't have to be everything. This guy knows business. He knows how to run this shop better than anyone. He does not know how to run those machines. And trust me, you don't want. Do the business with the guys who's running machines. No, that's you the... you you want to do business with this guy. So that's the whole point. People don't hire you because you know how to put a couple shingles together. They hire you because you know how to sell and run the business. Yeah. And it's two different skill there's, sets. It's there's a balance in it because I can agree. You know, like the the guys, whether they grew up in the roofing space, dad was a roofer, they started in high school, you know, they made yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. The E, the, when you go get your EIN, you know what the E stands for? It's ego. <laughs> it stands for your ego. And, and a lot of times we got to learn to put that aside because when you go get a tax ID outside of everyone from high school thinking you're the man and now you're making a million dollars in this, that, there's got to be a level of self awareness. And when, what comes with self awareness is understanding what you're good at and what you're not good at. I always knew, like, even when we started my cleaning company, Started out of my mom's garage. It took four of us to carry a 24 foot ladder out of Home Depot. We had no clue what we were doing, but you get into the trade, you learn a little bit, you learn how to provide the service, you get on the forums and the groups and ask advice and get mentors and all that stuff. You get to decide what part of your business you're going to be good at. So that emotion, you know, of, oh man, I hate when guys do this. It's like, I always look at it more like, I'm impressed with people that get into things where they don't know what they're doing and they differentiate themselves by education. We all have the same amount of minutes mm -hmm. during the day. But if you can spend your minutes learning and doing something, what's the difference between a guy who started his company yesterday and a guy who, who started it 30 years ago? The difference is 30 years. But where do you spend your experience? So that guy who's had his company for 30 years, he might be trying to run all his own books. He might be trying to do his own HR. He might be trying to do all these things. Where the younger guy understands, maybe I'm not the best roofer, but I'll go knock a door. I'll go do a presentation for a property manager. I'll go be the guy who can throw on the polo. They can do the dance. And I'm going to hire the professionals to do the work on the putting the roof on or do the thing in the warehouse or whatever. So I think there's a very balanced middle of, you know, technician, sales, business owner, if you can start like this is a relatively new business with dope marketing guys, if you would have told me three years ago that I would own a print shop, I would have told you you were fucking crazy. Like there's no way that I would have agreed with it. But I saw a need because we were brokering out a lot of the print work, just like people broker out their roofing installs. Yep. It's all relative and all of it. And so it's like, if you can understand what you started your business to do, what problem you were trying to solve and where you bring the most value to the table. Again, don't hire me to go run the print shop. I'll probably get fired back there within two days. Uh -huh. But at the same time, I know myself well enough. Let me help with the strategy. Let me help put the designs, the offers, that stuff together, because that's where, you know, this business and your business too, guys, anyone watching this, your business is bigger than just you. It's bigger than just one person. And you just got to identify the hat you wear where you can provide the most value to your Shane says, sales guys can do what we do. Well, Shane, uh, first of all, I would not put all the sales guys under one umbrella. 
I mean, you don't know the experience. You don't know the background. I mean, sales guys also come from different uh, walks of life. So not every sales guy is the same. Shane says they do not deserve the revenue that someone who has put in the time and hard work. Or Shane, we're Shane, gonna disagree. Shane, <laughs> Shane you really on the sales guys, man. They do not deserve the revenue. All right, I'm gonna answer to this argument. I don't agree with you, Shane. Here's why. Here's the life of the salesman. Most sales guys in this industry. Here's why sales guys deserve the money. They take higher risk. They most of the time they don't get paid. It, Good sales guy also will invest in his education. He has to be like to sell million dollar a year for 10 years in a row. It takes a skill. Yeah. It takes discipline. Yeah. I've seen guys who do like there's a company in Chicago who just does siding. And I met a sales rep uh, who does about half a million dollars. I mean, for himself, which means he sells four or five million a year worth of siding. I would hire him. Most roofing companies would hire him. He brings more value than any installer in that company. Here's why. He builds his book of business. His truck is organized. He's on top of his cell phones. Like he could uh, uh, contact list, his estimates, his invoices, all of that. He builds network of management companies, so on. Listen, how does this guy does not deserve to get to be rich? He brings company four or five million dollars worth of business. Where's he at? <laughs> You know, I mean, the company does like nine million and one guy uh, does the same with the four. And I've seen those guys many, many times. So guys like this is America. It's capitalism. You have a skill. And now if you want to work with your hands and you limit, let's say, 50 bucks an hour, 75 bucks an hour. Still good living. It's a good, great living. But you're not you work, you get paid. This guy, if tomorrow something happens to him, if if, if he cannot talk anymore, it, it, Something happened to his brain, done. he's done. Just like why uh, professional boxers and stuff get paid as much as they do MMA fighters. After that fight in a cage, they will never be the same. Okay. They'll never walk away from there the same. And sales mentally as tough as physical labor tough on those guys. So I disagree. I've done both. I've done sales. I've done, Honestly, mentally... And lifestyle of installer is easier in many, many ways. You don't have a headaches. Yeah. I've seen sales guys taking their lives. I have not seen as many installers and in hard labor because labor is satisfying. And when you take risk, yeah. and I've seen guys starving who's doing sales. So I don't agree with you. I think we should let market decide how much sales guys should get paid. I agree that there is abuse. I agree there is, especially by the guys sure. who are not, for sure, who is not honest. What would you like to add? I think there are probably guys, sales guys that can be better installers. But I think you hit it on the head where the installer, there's more security. It's almost like having a salary versus getting paid commission. There's going to be a ceiling to the financial reward of a installer. But an installer is going to be more of like a down to, you know, understands his life, understands his family, understands these things, might not need the shiny objects and the different stuff where the sales guy's like, no, I'm going to go move and shake and do the stuff. I think there's equal value. I think that an installer, it'd be nice if there wasn't as much resentment between the two because well, it takes one to have the other. Exactly. And and that's the thing. That's it. Like you, you have, I mean, and honestly, sometimes owners lose the most you have a sales guys who, right. who are pretty good you have installers who can go work for any companies what about owners what about owners who get paid sometimes less than installers and less than sales guys yep. how is that fair i agree and as a like for years here's how uh, how i look at things like for years if you agree to a sales guy you know pay him let's say 10 percent uh, like i always pay them with a smile on my face you you know does not matter of amount he sold 100k job it's ten thousand dollars numbers are numbers you agree to why not but i see so many guys who runs businesses like this is not fair you've been there for two hours 10 grand fire you not gonna pay you right that's taking place it's not fair if you Ego. add value i mean the same go listen shane the same goes and i see that you're calling it ridiculous and i i get that you're pissed but the thing about this people 
who hires you can say the same about you. They can say that you as a business owner take advantage of other labor. I mean, we'll do it in a way. I mean, you go to the hospital, the, the doctors in the hospital are 1099s. Is the hospital taking advantage of it? Probably too in a way, shape or form, but you have to have this good evil to run a business. This is America. It's not perfect, but it's the best system that humanity created. Shane McGuire, you're not a good owner if you pay out all of your profit. Shane, you never pay out your profit. You pay what you agreed. And sales guys, one thing about sales guys, unlike labor, they can mess up. It, it's it's a fixed rate 90% of the time. That's it. it. It's a tax. It come, Your sales comes at cost. Your marketing comes. You, 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 your sales have marketing costs to it. And... Especially if you hire some door knockers, how is a door knocker who brings you business does not deserve part of that business? And how come it's not a fixed price? It should be. It's it's not employees. It's different. They love to tell us their secrets. <laughs> Fulfillment. Yes, they do. You know, Shane, if, if you ever come to really like truly good conference, not the one that try to sell it, like, listen, everything I know, I learned at some kind of events. I go to content marketing world. I went to YouTube conferences. Like everything I know, I learned within the last like five, six years changed my life yep. because someone was willing to teach. I learned in YouTube more than I learned in college. And yep. I have five years of college. <laughs> <laughs> like teachers in college did not want to teach me as much Should as people on right. YouTube do now. Right. Absolutely. So you'll be surprised.